Neville Brody was organising this anti-design festival. And I kind of said to him, if you find me a wall, I'll paint it. And they found me a wall. And I painted it. And then, uh, so we finished that on kind of Sunday. And then uh, Monday morning, I got an email from Mark in there saying, we really love you, anti, anti, anti. Do you fancy painting pro, pro, pro on our wall? A little bit happier and a little bit brighter. So uh, I was like, yeah, cool. Why not? So uh, here I am, painting a big pro, pro, pro. An underground street artist selling out to the advertisers. Oh dear, it's not very good, is it? <laughs> Mother's a cool advertising agency. Mark's a cool dude. I know Mark likes my stuff. He's bought a canvas off me in the past. It's a bit of fun that Mother want to do. I've never done this font on the street before. I've done canvases with it. Yeah, it's looking good. Very bright and colourful. Yeah, and I'm pleased. It's going to look nice, hopefully. There's still enough time for me to fuck it up. Graffiti in its purest form is just advertising for the individual. You know, if you break it down and take away the fun and the ego elements of it, it's just an individual purely advertising himself, but repetitively writing his name over and over and over again. And, you know, the kids like it. Kids like graffiti, graffiti's cool. Advertisers, you know, they, they'll nick it. We appropriate it. <laughs> They'd be mad not to. If I had an advertising agency, I'd be nicking whatever cool shit was going on anywhere in the world. And I'd have a mantelpiece full of those little funny pencils. <laughs> When I did graffiti, I wasn't doing characters and New York skylines and all of that. It was all about the construction of the word and trying to make your name or your word look as cool and as fresh and as styly and as funky as possible. And when I kind of packed up graffiti and started doing street art, I didn't want to be another, be another person just doing stencils of cute animals or old wrestlers. So, uh, yeah, I just thought I would do uh, typography <laughs> and uh, kind of make it my own. In graffiti, you write a tag, so you do millions of tags, and these silver things with black outlines are called dubs. And you do hundreds of dubs, and then you paint trains, you do pieces, and then you do like whole carriages, top to bottom, wild style, crazy things and they're like the ultimate thing. So the shutters are kind of my street art equivalent of dubs. And then stuff like this is like my version of a kind of a top to bottom hole cut. I was uh, in my studio cutting out a stencil, Friday night about 10 o'clock and the phone rang and it was uh, Anya Hindmark, she said, Samantha Cameron's a big fan of your work. I kind of thought, you're yeah, right. And she said, David is looking for a painting to give to the most important man in the world. I can't say his name, but think America. Would you be interested? I was like, yeah. Sunday, I remembered that I had this painting in this gallery in Brighton called 21st Century City. So I arranged to meet them in Brighton on Monday morning to pick up the painting. I went down to Brighton and all of my paintings were there and they were all wrapped up. And I went through them and I was like, where's 21st Century City? And they were like, oh, we sent it back to London. And there was a man driving down from Downing Street to pick up the painting to take it to Gatwick to get on a plane to Washington. Because Cameron was meeting Obama at three o'clock in the afternoon. It was like, oh, fuck. So we had to turn the car around, go to London, pick up the painting. And I think they had to delay the plane for the painting. Because otherwise Cameron wouldn't have, wouldn't have had a gift for Obama. And it was the first time they met each other. And the wives weren't there, so the press weren't going to talk about what the wives were going to be wearing. 
So everyone was going to be talking about the art. And Cameron wouldn't have had a painting and he'd look like an idiot. And then the story hit the news desks on Tuesday morning. And yeah, my phone didn't stop ringing for like a month. Interviews and television and, and now all this. Yeah, it's cool. It's changed my life. David Cameron, I love him. I do. <laughs> for me, you know, lots of people paint shit and then put it on the internet and no one ever actually sees it in real life. And for me, it's important for real people to actually see it. And, you know, East London to me is where street art kind of, kind of lives and kind of, well, London street art kind of lives and it's kind of home. So for me, it's important to paint shit around here. And the fact that I don't live up here anymore makes getting walls harder. So, yeah, on the back of the barn thing, it's good that I'm now getting invitations to paint stuff like this.